saved the worst for last, huh? How are we doing today? Um, it's a nice warm day in Pittsburgh. Spring ball. I was going call it winter ball here the last two years. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it was a solid day. Uh, obviously, there's no pads on. Um, you know, maybe a little rusty, different things. You know, we'll get to watch the tape, but I thought we had a good tempo overall. Um, you know, I just really i am looking at practice mechanics and moving around and, um, you know, just some details that we got to clean up as far as that goes. And, uh, we'll just keep getting better every day in practice. So, questions? Mark, what is the offense going to be this year? Yeah, there's going to be, you know, some, you know, there's going to be some similarities. Jerry, I'm not going to talk, you know, structurally as far as what we're getting. You know, obviously, you'll see it in the spring game. But, um, you know, we're going to do what we did well a year ago, and we're going to fix what we did do well. That's, you know, that's simple. So, um, you know, if you're running the ball well, why change what you're doing? If you're not throwing the ball, change and revamp that, and let's throw it the right way. I feel like two years ago there was an emphasis on carrying over uh, a lot of the success you had had on offense and trying to do a lot of the same things. Are you maybe giving Mark more free reign? Mark has free reigns, period. I mean, it's his offense. Um, and uh, But no, no coaches, uh, you know, not smart enough to look at the tape and go, man, I really like that play. That looks good. Let's do that again. And then you look at that and you go, man, that doesn't look very good. Let's stop doing that. I mean, that's what coaches do. Um, like, like everybody says, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And, uh, there's obviously a lot of things that we can fix, you know, in all you know, three phases of the game. And we're gonna, you know, that's what we do in the offseason. That's what we've been doing since we got off the road in February is, is evaluating what we're doing offensively and defense and special teams. And you know, we got books this thick on, you know, just detailing out what we did on every single play. We've had every run, every pass uh, on both sides of the ball, every special team. So we got all kinds of stats I can just give you guys books of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, so that's what, that's what we did in the offseason. Now we're out here to fix those things. Now, we were looking guard. Weaver, uh, we, we were. Wheeler, Wheeler looks, uh, you know, good. He asked me down there during our field goal period, like, hey, coach, I don't look. I was like, we're shot. I have no idea. Man, I didn't just watch you. He's like, I thought you might have caught a play. Um, but, you know, shot's excited. And, yeah, we'll, we'll watch the tape. And that's what we'll do for the, for the next three and a half hours is, is evaluate the tape and see – you know, what improvements he needs to make. I said, ask Jimmy Morrison. Jimmy will know. Jimmy's like, he did pretty good. You know? So, so <laughs> why Jimmy you, Morrison did pretty good. Why do you think he can make the transition? Why do I think? You know, because he's a good athlete. I mean, I think when you talk about just, just the evolution of, you know, wherever I've been, shoot, I think for the first six or seven years at Michigan State, the only drafted lineman we had was a kid named Dan France from uh, North Royalton High School in, in, in uh, I guess, southern Cleveland area. He was the only drafted lineman that we had in the first six or seven you know, go back and look at the documents there, um, but he was a defense tackle that we recruited at the end of guard for the Bengals. Um, that's the first one I can remember that we had, and Conklin came after that. Um, but, you know, D, D linemen are big athletic guys that are, you know, they got great hands and great feet. I mean, he runs around um, really well, and it just adds to the athleticism. You know, it's no different than a Mike Hurd. You know, it adds to the athleticism of, of an offensive line. I think any time you move a D tackle, you've had a lot of success through the years. What do you like about Phil's game to move from the outside linebacker? You know, you look at Sean Ido graduated. It was like, you know, we're always looking to see how we can get, you know, our best 11 players on the field. And, and uh, you know, we had a couple of safeties that we like. And Phil, you know, can always go back and play safety. Uh, don't get me wrong, but we wanted to see. He's just a physical football player, and he fits the mold. You know, that position is kind of a hybrid safety outside linebacker. And um, it's just really getting, you know, our best 11 on the field. And, and you know, we've got a lot of Lots, a lot of teaching to do with him, but I think it's going to be a great opportunity for him to get a lot more reps. That's so, big, big picture wise, when we first talked to Mark, he said he met with the quarterbacks and they were kind of like, all right, you know, what can we do now to, to catch Clemson in this? You're opening a new year, a new spring ball. You've taken that step of winning the Coastal. I mean, is that being talked about uh, around this team? Is like we've gotten to Charlotte. What can we do now to, to make sure we finish the job? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, kind of what you do. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, we're going to be a little bit, you know, one step closer to where we want to be. Um, you know, there's a lot of teams that like to have been in that championship a year ago, but I think our guys kind of learned. And you know, you hear little comments. You know, you're not, ne not necessarily addressing it, but you're hearing comments from our kids like, "Coach, we're taking it this year." You know, it's like we're going to go get it. You know, I think you know it's one thing to get there; it's another thing to win it. But I think the experience is everything. I think you got to be there now. I think they're a little bit hungry to go take that next step. It seems like you've got even after moving. From Campbell, a number of guys that are um, feeling like they can compete for a job at safety alongside DeMar, whether it's Stalker, Coleman, Garner, Ford. And, yeah. It feels like that's a pretty deep position for you, even yeah. after the move. 
that was one of the things you know that we looked at. Uh, and again, like I said, Phil could still go back there and be a safety. I mean, if we had to play a game tomorrow, I would say Phil would be the starting safety because he's got the most experience. But that's you know, we got 15 days. We got all of August to, to get those guys right back there. But Stockers, you know, continually showed improvement uh, through the years. Paris Ford continues to get better. He's got more confidence. Uh, I like what I saw to him today, and it's just going to keep getting better. Mentally, he's been really good in the classroom. We were going through kind of a test, on, a video test yesterday with him. Uh, so he's worked hard at it, and he's just going to continue to work at it um, so he knows what to do, but he's a playmaker. Uh, and we know what DeMar has done. Had a long line with Paris. Have you seen like a maturity light go off with him? He was telling us about how much more mature he is now. Have you seen a, a big growth in that regard? Yeah, and again, you see it on the field and off the field. You know, And I'll just point this out. Like, a week ago, he was. You know, we got two week blocks for study hall. Forget football, okay? Because it's if you if you if you don't have this one down here and you're not mature down here, you won't be mature up on the hill. Um, but just you know, I don't want to throw out his study hall hours. But he was short a couple hours. But we give you two weeks to get your hours in. So if you're supposed to have eight hours, you know, week one and eight hours week two, how many is that equal? Sixteen total. So he's got to get those hours in. Well, if you only get six the first week, what's he got to get the second week? Ten. Ten. So not only did Paris get ten. He got 12. He got two extra hours of study hall. That shows maturity right there. It wasn't like, you know, he wasn't, you know, moaning about, I got to get 10 this week. He went and got two more. So that, to me, shows the maturity up there, which is going to transfer onto the field as well. So he's really grown up. I'm, I'm happy with he, where he is right now. Um, and that's what happens. I mean, everybody takes a little bit longer. He's a great football player. He'll make a lot of plays. We just got to get him on the field. Anything else? That's it. All right, guys. Thanks, guys.